and welcome to We the Students, a political discussion sponsored by Nasa Regional High School's AP uh, Government and Politics class in collaboration with the video production program here at Nasset. My name is Isabel Pellegrini. I am your guest host today, and I'm a senior here at Nasset and a veteran of the AP Government course. I'd like to put on record that any opinions expressed here today are those of the panelists and not of Nasset Regional High School or the Nasset Regional School District. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see an email address for our panel today. I encourage you to email us with, email us, excuse me, with any thoughts or uh, suggestions related to today's topic so that you can continue this discussion in our government classroom. Now let's meet our panelists. On my left, we have John McCarthy and Andy O'Sullivan. And on my right, we have Lydon Johnson, Mel Fleming, and Tobin Brown. Now that further ado, let's begin. The issue facing us today is Confederate statues. Do they honor slavery and institutionalized racism, a social ailment that has plagued our society in the infancy of our nation, or do they serve to commemorate statues or soldiers, excuse me, who fought for the in the historical conflict between the North and the South, a conflict that has since proven to be a defining moment for our nation? Cities and towns all across America have been debating with what to do about these public memorials. So what I'm wondering is, how do you believe we should address the meaning behind these Confederate statues? And with that, should these Confederate statues be allowed to remain standing, or should they be removed? Uh, Tobin, let's start with you. Uh, actually, Mal here is going to make the opening statement, if that's all right. Oh, um, I just wanted to begin by saying that just because we are sitting on this side of the panel, it doesn't necessarily mean that we condone or accept racism or slavery because these statues stand for much more than just white supremacy because we wouldn't be in the nation that we're living in today if um, these men never fought in the Confederacy. So I believe that we should keep their statues up instead of uh, taking them down and dishonoring them. Andy, your response? All right, well, I do, I'd like to thank you for bringing up that it's not about like whether we are, believe in racism or not, but I would like to say that we on this side do believe the statues stand for basically nothing more than racism. And even though it is part of our history, the whole um, Civil War was a major founding point of American history, the Confederacy were, was the enemy and they were actually traitors and having these Confederate statues is kind of like erecting a huge um, statue of Benedict Arnold in the middle of the Boston Common kind of because they're the enemy to America. Could you just give a brief synopsis of who Benedict Arnold was? Um, Benedict Arnold was a traitor in the Revolutionary War and betrayed the U.S. working for the British. Thank you. Um, I believe that we should keep this up, though. Like, I know that you say it's not about racism, but I believe that we shouldn't be um, dishonoring our past or, like, forgetting about it because these statues can be used as tools or mechanisms for learning so future generations shouldn't have to like forget about what happened during the confederacy like uh, we should so learn from them and building off that i just wanted to uh, ask I, I understand that they they definitely can impose a racist uh, I idea upon a lot of black people which is understandable but why is it that not, uh, why would every single black person not be offended by this? Why are there some people, some black people that aren't offended by these, these statues? Well, according to the Pew Research Center, there are only 38% of people in America that know the Civil War was actually about slavery. So some people may not have a problem with it because they don't know what the Civil War was actually about. Mm -hmm. And going off your point and saying that it's kind of erasing history, Statues aren't how we erase history, they're how we glorify history. We, like to record history, we put things in museums and books. Statues are put up for things we're proud of. And we don't necessarily need to destroy the statues. You could easily move them into a museum so people that want to look at them and learn about these historical figures and times can go to a museum and learn about them on their own accord and not just see it in the middle of their street. I can understand that 38% of people you said didn't understand yes. what the Civil War was even about. But not every black person, I'm telling you right now, not every black person has no idea what the Civil War is about. And there are conflicting opinions between black people. Some say that, yeah, we should tear it down. And uh, there's another side that says no. So why would other black people say that, no, 
These aren't offensive, and, in, and indeed, we, we should actually view these as, instead of a racist and imposing offensive uh, monument, view it as a historical time in our past, a, a historical rectification of what happened in the past, to acknowledge it, to recognize it, not to, not to view it as an oppression, but more of as a historical um, instance in our time, which, yes, of course, is evil, it's cruel, it's nasty, and, of, of course, slavery is wrong. But, and, and, and racism, of course, is wrong. But also, we have to understand that it's, it's not, it's not, it really shouldn't be okay to just completely forget it, but to also acknowledge it. And a lot of black people do agree with this. So why, why is there this confliction? Why do some people, some black people agree and some black people don't agree? Why is there that split? Why don't all black people think that this is a racist monument? If, if I could just interject here, I just want to um, ask, do you think that by erecting a statue of a Confederate figure, do you think it inherently puts the values of the Confederate, i.e. slavery, racism, on a pedestal and honors it, or do you think it just purely serves to um, r recognize that it was a part of our past? Like, do you think it honors it or just um, recognizes it? I, 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 the, the whole purpose of the debate is, is it's subjective. I mean, it, it depends on how you view it. I view it as a recognition of the past. It's, it's a point that it was an internal conflict within America that ought to be, rec that ought to be understood well understood by the majority of those 38% of people, they should see that monument. They should understand, wow, who's Robert E. Lee? Let's, let's, let's you know, delve into who he was. Let's study. Okay, he was, an, he was, he was a, a Confederate general, right? He was a slave. He was a pr provocateur of slavery. Understandable. So let's, let's inform people. Let's use these monuments to inform people. Let's fix that, that 38%. Let's make those people understand what the, what the Civil, Civil War was about and inform, inform America. Why not use it for that purpose? Well, I think there are better ways to inform people about what the Civil War was about than erecting statues in South Carolina that say, the soldiers who wore the gray and died with Lee were in the right. There, a lot of the statues were not erected as commemorations of the soldiers that died and people fighting for their beliefs. I'm all for remembering the soldiers, but you don't need to have Robert E. Lee standing or sitting on his horse wielding a gun. You could have statues of something like Robert E. Lee signing the surrender, or simply just like a horse, or anything like that. The statues and monuments that recognize soldiers who lost their lives are not the ones found in public. Those are found in graveyards and things. There was actually a study done on this in the Southern Poverty Law Center. And most of the statues that you find in public were not dedicated until decades after the mm -hmm. Civil War ended. Like, there were huge spikes during the Civil Rights Movement, and there have been 53 statues and monuments that have been dedicated or rededicated since the years of 2000 and on. And that just seems a little excessive to bring it up this late in the game, saying, oh yeah, we're gonna m remember these soldiers lost their lives in 1865. And a lot of the time, at these commemorations and, um, um, what's it called? Dedication, sorry. Mm. The dedication ceremonies. There are actual KKK <laughs> leaders and members standing up and giving the commencement speeches. That is a fact that has been taken down at many different sites and many different newspapers. And in some of these speeches, people say things like, the statues were to honor their history and recall the achievements of the great and good of our own race and blood. And uh, just, I think that's uh, what... If I may, sure, do you yeah, have a response to that? Well, I was going to say that, um, yeah, so like, the, where they come from, it is racist, but the statues itself don't represent them, and I don't believe that the people that are saying, like, our own race and blood, like, that's not acceptable. Like, the statues are for the past to recognize the people that died, not because of what they died for. Yeah, but the statues of the people, these people, like, believed in slavery and, like, racism, but we're, like, portraying it, like, we're having these statues up that like basically symbolize racism I mean it like is in remembrance of like the Civil War but it also has a big effect on like slavery and like what people may believe well again this is the subjective the subjective issue I mean I, I, I'm sure you, you've heard like where does the where do you draw the line I mean we, we can go to yeah I'm sure yeah, yeah we can go to Washington the Washington Monument we can go to even even Abraham Lincoln, he's he was viewed as the the, the freer of all slaves. But his first uh, issue, his first resolve to slavery was let's send all the black, all the African Americans back to Africa. That was his first uh, idea. And then of course the Emancipation, Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, etc. But 
Where, where do you draw the line? I mean, these were slave owners. They were, these were people who were pro-slavery. I mean, where, where, where do you draw the line for this? I think that's a very faulty argument because... Why? Well, you're going to draw the line, obviously, at some point. Where? Robert E. Lee is known for fighting for the Confederacy, the enemy to the Union, the U.S., and nothing more than slavery. Someone like George Washington has achievements under his belt. He is known for good things. He has... Yes, he was racist, he owned slaves, and that's a problem. Him and people like Thomas Jefferson. So they can be kind of racist. Well, that's okay not what the statues are commemorating. They're commemorating the but you're good viewing deeds. it that way. You're viewing, you're, you're, so you're saying that only the Confederate statues should be viewed as a racist thing, but the George Washington one, we'll ignore the racism part, we'll just look at his, his achievements. Well, what's Robert E. Lee known for other than the Civil War? No, that, that's what I'm saying. He, the Civil War is what I'm, I'm focused on. Yeah. Yes, and I'm focused that we should uh, acknowledge that. But you're, when you look at George Washington, you're telling me you're ignoring the racism aspect and saying that we should just know him and understand him for all the great deeds. Why not understand the bad deeds as well? Why not have an equal balance? Let's, let's, let's understand and not commemorate, but recognize the evil and the good in America. Why not do both? Or so, some of the good, like... Yeah. Things about Robert E. Lee. I mean, are you saying just because George Washington was racist, we should have Confederate statues? I mean, I'm what not mean? sure what you're arguing. No, I'm arguing that like, George I just Washington said. did bad things, and he didn't have the best views. And obviously, we're judging people in the past by today's standards, and that's always difficult yes, to do. It's yes. almost impossible. But the statue was not put up to commemorate the slaves he owned, and the statues of Robert E. Lee were put up to say. He hated black people. He wanted to keep slaves. That's what he fought for. But that's only one, 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 one group's argument, the KKK. I'm, I'm not viewing it that way. And, and a, black, a lot of black people aren't viewing it that way. There's a majority of people who, who view it indifferently. It's, it's, from, it's a subjective thing of how you, you, you know, you're viewing these, these statues. And I'm saying you, shouldn't, you should just take the racism thing aside for a second and just say that, yes, it, 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 these statues do, may, they may represent an evil, but... Un let's understand it. Let's 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 allow people to understand these statues and then not and not not view it as an oppressive thing. Let's just view it as a historical, uh, like um, um, aspect of, in society. You know what I mean? So, um, Mel, I just want to hear from you. And where do you think uh, Tobin referenced the line? Uh, where do you think the line is between um, having a statue commemorating <laughs> a Confederate statue, whatever the uh, the meaning and significance may be behind that statue? Um, do you think it belongs in a public square, uh, or do you think it belongs in a museum, like you mentioned? Um, just like if it's meant, like Tobin said, to um, recognize the historical significance that this chapter in the American story has played out, where do you believe the appropriate um, place to convey that is? Oh uh, well, these statues, uh, they teach people today like how far our nation has come since the Confederacy and when you say that when statues are erected they are to honor people or like for something like that um, when like for example Mount Rushmore was built to it has the faces of um, slave owning men on it but that was built to honor them was it not and now you're just saying that because they were slave owning, like they owned people, which they believed was normal during the Confederacy. Like didn't, they didn't know any better because that was what they believed was normal. Are you gonna dishonor their faces and like demolish Mount Rushmore, a money-making historical monument? And are you gonna take out the memorials and the monuments inside the Smithsonian Museum? Because for example, there's statues in there that uh, resemble men that have already owned slaves, but they're still being shown off and they stand in the museum. I think that it's okay to have the monuments in museums and if you want to go to a museum you're going to see like learn about our past and things that have happened. I mean I don't I think the statues like erected like in like in like public areas like shouldn't like shouldn't be there. I think they should be put in museums. Like put the ones in museums shouldn't be taken down, but they, because they like they're for people to learn and like people go there to learn about stuff like that. So if you're saying that we should keep them there, then why should we take Confederate statues down someplace else? Like they're providing, like tool, they're a tool for us to learn about what happened during the Confederacy. Yeah, but some people don't want to learn about it, and like sometimes it offends some people. Why would you put things that might offend a, a, a majority of people? 
in public areas like <coughs> towns, squares and stuff. Can like, I just say one more thing? What you had said about statues, we should leave them up because they remind us of how far we came. After World War II, statues of Hitler came down almost immediately. Statues of Hada uh, Saddam Hussein came down almost immediately. And that shows them moving on from totalitarian and dictatorships and moving on from their past. And people arguing, not necessarily you, but people who are arguing to keep them down saying, slavery ended with the Civil War. Yes, but there's still a lot of underlying racism. And I think the, the South's refusal to take down those statues kind of represents our refusal to move on from those racist ideologies because there still is a huge race problem in America. Okay, so you're, you're saying you, you want to fix racism. I agree. I think racism is, is evil and we should fix, we should definitely work on uh, minimizing it as much as possible. I don't think it's possible to completely erase racism, be racism because there will always be uh, evil in this world. Well, yes. I mean, it's, it, that, it's inevitable. But what are you really gaining? What are, what are black people really gaining from uh, removing these Confederate statues? Or is, the, is, the, the un, is their unemployment rate going to go down at some point? Is their um, the, 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 uh, single motherhood rate, is that really going to go down? Is the crime rate really going to go down just because you tear down these statues? I mean, what is the actual benefit that they're going to be receiving from this? A nice 10 minute feel good, I'm not offended by it anymore? I mean, what, what is the good that, that outweighs the, you know, my point of view? Like, what, what, what is the benefit for it? Well, I think little 10-year-old kids aren't going to have to go outside their house and look at a gunslinging racist on the back of a horse made in stone, and their mom's going to have to say, yeah, he fought to keep you in chains. He didn't want you to be free like you are now. That's, that, should be, that should be what? That, that sh that's what I'm saying is that that mother is doing a great job of teaching her child that this man is the, the, the epitome of the evil in history of America. Why would you and build a statue of the evil, though? Because we're showing that that is no longer existent. Why do this, you need we, 1,500 because we've three moved, Confederate Because we've moved on US. from that point. We've moved on from, we're in, there aren't, you show me slavery right now in America, legal. In a legal basis, slavery is obviously illegal. You sh we, it, the whole purpose is to show that Americans have progressed. We have moved on from this. That mother is showing the kid that this is the past, what you see around you and in, the, in America today is the present. This is where we are. We've moved on from that. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. That statue should be used as a learning tool, not as, a, not as an oppressive figure. I mean, it, it, if anything, it should be, a, a kid should see that and say, this guy tried to hold me back. You know, if, if I were living in that era, this, this guy would have wanted to, to, to own me as a human being. This kid should, the mother should tell the kid, prove that guy wrong. Go, go you know, get an education. Be, become a successful human being, get a job, have kids, have a family, prove that this racist ideology, this oppressive statue isn't holding me back from being, from being a successful American. That, that's what it should be viewed as, as a learning tool, per se. I do agree with that, but I feel like there is an excess of them in the United States, and there are states that have hundreds of them like all around, and wherever you go, it's hard to avoid these things, and I think it's a little excessive. And also, even if they can be used as a learning tool, it's kind of hard to separate them from the history and why they were originally erected. I mean, it's hard to deny that, like, obviously, not all of them were put up with good intentions of, oh, sure. we're going to honor the people that lost their lives. Sure. A lot of them were put up with racist intentions. Okay, so what about the pyramids in Giza? Should we tear those down? They were, they were built by race. They were built by, not racist, they were built by slaves. Slaves had to, were forced to build those pyramids. Should we tear it down? I mean, what about the, the poor uh, kids who nowadays whose ancestors were slaves and had to build that? They have to see that, those pyramids every single day in, in, in uh, Africa. I mean, my, my, my God, that's, that's to you, that'd be, that'd be an offensive, uh, offensive symbol, right? What about, um, um, uh, not, 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 not the other argument. I meant the, just, the, just the pyramids themselves are viewed as, they could be viewed as instead a, not, not, a, not a commemoration of racism, but a commemoration of achievement. A human achievement, and that this that sure this was built by slaves, but it's it's an, it's a human accomplishment that could be viewed as like not not necessarily a learning tool, but saying that it's it's you know like architectural achievement. Like instead of viewing everything with a racist tinge to it, but are Confederate saying. statues an architectural achievement? Not necessarily. I mean, we've been making statues since the beginning of mankind. I mean, yeah. What's the purpose? What purpose other than educational? Right. Does it hold? 
I mean, we well, the educational outweighs that racist factor that you're There are other to places to get educational information. We, I mentioned this before. You can go to a m museum. I'm not saying you have to tear all these statues down and destroy them. They should be available for people to see. I think education should be made more available to people. There should be a Confederate museum where people, there are Confederate museums, but I feel like there should be more information available showing both sides, and I feel like that's not being handled properly, and the way to fix that isn't to keep these huge statues up so people can go, yeah, that was my grandpappy. He fought to keep black people enslaved. I'm proud of him. Like, we're not trying to erase history or change history. I just think that these statues are in bad taste and they should be moved. I, I'll agree. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, I'll, I'll bring you in here. Um, so I want, just want to know what you think about the relevance that this Having, let's take uh, some place we all know, the Boston Commons, say that there is a Confederate statue in the Boston Commons. What significance do you think that plays in the, in the everyday passerby of, of the Boston Commons? And do you think that the historical significance of a Confederate statue is enough to outweigh the racial implications of the Confederacy? Uh, yes, I believe that. I believe that if they saw the statue and they took time to look at it, they'd be like, okay, this person was part of the Confederacy. They had slaves, but the statue is up to remember them for how they fought. They fought for the South. They, they, ne they didn't necessarily fight for slavery. They, they could have fought for their homeland, because I know there are people that will fight for the homeland no matter what. So if they fought for that, then I think that outweighs the racism. They can and, and let's take a step back from statues and just look at the Confederacy. Um, itself. In history, do you think it, it is more of, um, uh, or sorry, should we reflect on the Confederacy as a significant moment in our history in which the country was divided and then through the Civil War and et cetera, et cetera, um, eventually we were reunited? Or is it, a, it like a symbol, a geographical symbol of racism? Um. I think it should be viewed as like there were bad people and then the Civil War was a way to bring everyone back together. Can I just say that in the secession, like in the declaration of secession from many of the states in the Confederacy, the reason they were seceding is because they stated that their foundations were embedded with the idea and the practice of slavery and the fact that the North was trying to take that away was so unbearable that they tried to, and they did secede. And like trying to um, glorify these soldiers who fought for the Confederacy. Once again, they committed treason against the U.S. I'm not sure why we, the United States, would have all these statues and military bases and schools named after literal like people that committed treason against the U.S. when it, they have like so many better options to be named after. Like Once again, it's like leaving those statues of Hitler up or Saddam Hussein or Benedict Arnold. They're not the they're not on our side, they're the enemy. I, I, I mean, I, I agree, of, of course, but the, 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 the issue that I'm having with, it, with, with what you're saying is that you're, you're basically saying let's completely ignore the whole aspect of the evil part of our history. Let's just only promote the good and promote the positive, which I, is, of course, understandable. I mean, we're living in a positive, we're, we're, winning with, we're, winning, we're, we're, we're living with the victory that, we, that the Union had won in the Civil War. So, but what, what I'm saying is you need, to, you need to have a balance. You need to have that balance of, of um, ed education between both. You need to represent both sides so people can understand both sides. Not, not, you, have to, you have to separate this racism thing. You have to separate this, uh, the statue being oppressive. I mean, like, it, it, you, you just have to view it as a long-term educational tool for other people to see. And, I mean, it's in, in the whole being in public, at, public space, I mean, I, I, I'll agree with you. I think the, it should be more up to the local district to, because most of these stat statues are in local district, I think it should be more up to the local uh, community to decide what happens to these. It's, it's, I mean, it's up to them. But um, in, in, in terms of, of the whole racism thing, again, it, you, you have to put this racism thing aside. Or, or if you want to acknowledge it, then yes, acknowledge it. But don't view it as a statue still being oppressive today. View it as what happened then, where we are now, and then just use it, again, use it as the educational tool. I, I can't stress that enough. All right, I'd just like to close up with one final question for both sides. Um, in, the la in the past August, um, there was recent events uh, in Charlottesville and in which uh, there was a white supremacy rally. Um, and 
I just want to know from both sides what um, what significance that the this, this Confederate statue itself played in that event and whether or not the movement of white supremacy is hindered or um, helped through having these statues open in public public grounds. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to say that the uh, just because like the white supremacist maybe uh, a, a white supremacist in Charlottesville maybe saying more than one. There's actually in terms of the KKK members. There's well, that's besides. Let's just five to eight thousand KKK members, specific KKK members. But it, 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 statues. The, the statues themselves. Yeah. The uh, any white supremacist viewing the statue as being um, should have to stay up as well. They're viewing it for a different reason. They're viewing it for the white supremacist reason, and that's why I'm saying this whole argument is subjective. And m my purpose is the educational part. But just because a KKK member or some or white supremacist says the statue should stay up, I mean that, and, and I happen to agree. It doesn't mean we have the same reasoning. I mean, if a KKK member says the sky is blue, and I also happen to think the sky is blue, it doesn't mean I'm a KKK member. I mean, it's that, I mean that's what I'm saying. We may have a, agreements to keep it up, but they have different reasons. And so that's, that's just what I'm saying. John, do you um, answer my question? Um, well, or Andy, Okay. Um, well, I feel that having these statues up. Once again, I think it kind of perpetuates the idea that we haven't moved on from this racism, and I think that's what a lot of white supremacists are taking from this. And if I can just go back to something I had touched upon earlier, but I don't <coughs> think, uh, yeah. Um, but most statues were erected decades after the end of the Civil War, with large spikes from 1900 to 1920, during the time of Jim Crow laws, mm. and another spike in the 1950s and 60s during the peak of the Civil Rights Movement, and another giant spike in the years following 2000, when, which is when we had our first black, um, president, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was obvious that these statues were built and rededicated to send hostile messages to African Americans as opposed to commemorating the recently deceased. It's a way for white supremacists to, to tell people like, we don't like you, we didn't want this to happen, we're angry about it, here's Robert E. Lee to and prove I, that. I agree. Back then, in the 1920s and 30s, when they were first e erected, I, 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 or when, sorry, the, whenever the days were. 2000? 2000. There was, sure. In the years, what's the point of rededicating I, a statue? I agree. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. Uh, Absolutely, that there were there, that there were. No, I agree. There was a majority of people in history of America. That America has a very racist history. I agree. And throughout all the way up to the Civil Rights Movement, I understand. America, there was a majority of racist people in America. I, I get that. But is, a, is America really more ra as racist or more racist now than it was then? Is that racism still that bad? I, I disagree. I think. Black people have the exact same right. A black person right now has the exact same rights as me. But there's the still discrimination same. based upon it, even if it's not legal. Right, founded. and if you can show me where, I will agree with you. But in, in terms of legal basis, I, I just disagree. I don't think there is a racism in terms of, like, in a legal basis. Sorry, go ahead. And on that note, time is up. And so, unfortunately, we're going to have to hold our discussion there. Thank you all very much. Um, again, we invite you, our viewers, to see the email down on the bottom of your screen um, and email us with, with any suggestions or thoughts relating to the topic discussed today uh, so that we can continue this discussion in our government classroom. That concludes yet another segment of We the Students. We thank Nosset Regional High School's television productive produc production class and Nosset or the Lower Cape TV for making this valuable learning experience possible for all of us. Um, again, my name is Isabel Pellegrini and thank you for watching.